Okay, on to the next one. So this one is a, a bit of a bike that's obviously been left outside in the rain, in all weather. Um, this saddle is trashed. It's seized. I'm trying to just unseize it now so I can actually use the seat post. But you can see in the background there a yellow frame. And that is the bike that I'm going to be using in this video. Um, it's going to be a bit of an example, hopefully, of the rust stripping capabilities of, uh, what do you call it, Evapo Rust, or the English version which is I think Frost. Um, it's got a few rusty parts on it but the frame is really good. Um, I'm not actually sure what year it's from, but there it is. Too low. So this little bike here that we have is a Trek 6000 aluminium mountain bike. Uh, it's 3x7 and well the frame is actually really good condition. There's not really any scratches, major dents or anything like that on the frame. All of the wear seems to be in the components. Obviously the saddle is one of those things that is worn and needs to be replaced. But as we go down you can see the rust that is formed on nuts and bolts and a bit further down pedal cages and it's not even in focus. And then you get to the chain, the block and the derailers. It's equipped with all Suntour stuff, um, Suntour trigger shifters. I'm not actually sure that it will work yet, um, but the stem itself also has a bit of rust on. Can I focus that close? I can't. Show the roof. So the stem has a bit of rust on as well, um, which hopefully should be removed with a bathe in the solution that I've got. Now I've used oxalic acid before, that works. I've used white vinegar before. That works but I haven't tried this solution yet and hopefully according to reviews and their stuff it should be safe to use on this safe to use on the paint and uh, it should take away all this rust discoloration and make it look nice and clean again the biggest thing I want to test it on though is the block um, I haven't took it off yet so I'm not sure if it's freewheel or cassette I'm assuming cassette, um, but I want to test it on that and the chain to see how well it cleans up and gets them usable again because there doesn't appear to be many stiff links, they're all moving, they're just absolutely covered in rust, surface rust. Same goes for this derailleur cage, um, it's a nice working cage uh, part sorry but the cage is covered in the rust so I want to try this solution I'm gonna get the bike stripped down clean all the frame up but then we're gonna dunk all these parts in the stuff that I've got and I'll show you what I have so I've got that stripped down now uh, it's all in pieces it's a nice clean frame, I'm going to do some cleaning up on it, um, but the sticker that is right there, that orange sticker, actually shows that the bike was assembled right here in Tamworth, um, I believe the frame is possibly like a 94, so it's been here all its life, and I picked it up from here, so it hasn't left. Um, do I keep it, or do I not? It's a, it's a little relic from 94, um, but all the parts are down here. Everything is in the bowl, ready to be worked on. Um, actually, just relocate a second. So, as the camera zoom does it by itself. Um, there we go, focus. So I've got the stem, 
that just has the black paint just to slightly uh, dull down and got a little bit of rust on it so I want to dip that a bit further up we've got shifters and brake levers now they just have little bits of rust on the bolts but the shifters are or do seem to be seized so I'm gonna have to work on them um, underneath is the crank set which obviously just has a bit of rust on the bolts but in the bowl in the bowl here we have chain and freewheel it is a freewheel they are they have a lot of surface rust but they are free so they're going to be soaked um, the seat post is in there because I can't actually get the bolt out at the moment hopefully this might free it up not sure if not I'll have to cut the seat off and then work from there um, derailleur front derailleur that cage we're going to see if that cleans up got the brakes in there got the quick release skewers and the drive side cup I'm also putting the pedals in there because their cages are a nice shade of brown but I'm pretty sure they will come up black again and the buckles on them are rusted so we'll see how they go wait for this lorry to go past we'll see how they go but I'm going to soak this batch here first because I only have one tray uh, leave them over let's call it 24 hours so what time is it now it is 1.48 now um, I'm going to pour all the fluid in so 2 o'clock tomorrow I will check it clean them off and uh, put the next batch in now the stuff I'm using is like I said something like evapor rust but it is kind of like the UK supplier of it um, it's made it's supplied by frost and um, they do equipment restoration car restoration all that sort of stuff and um, they do actually have specific evaporous stuff on their website but it wasn't available for some reason so this is their stuff I'm just gonna pour it in I'm hoping it's exactly like a Vaporust where you can reuse this stuff um, what does it say on it? Reusable, biodegradable and non-corrosive removes rust to bare metal hopefully it's safe on plastics and stuff mm, this special formulation has been extensively researched and proven to be effectively remove even deep rust and all types of mild steel and iron, iron safe on all surfaces including copper, brass, aluminium, plastic, rubber and vinyl so it should be good uh, directions use at 65 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer that is not going to happen I have to, actually I'll take it inside I'll take it inside because it's going to be cold in the garage pre-clean items rinse de-rust for 1 to 12 hours depending on depth of rust and age of rust check for periodically once rust is removed rinse item with water ok so maybe I'll I'll take them inside then I'll pour the water I'll pour this solution in take them inside and we'll work inside from there where it's warmer because it's winter now and uh, we'll see how it goes okay welcome inside so it's eight o'clock now put them in at two o'clock um, in the relative warm like they said and I can already see there's a difference there's a difference already in fact I checked them earlier I checked them after a couple of hours and there was a definite difference so this is the front derailleur and the front derailleur is very shiny now um, earlier I took this out and gave it a brush just a normal uh, scrubbing brush for your hands just wiped it over it's not really abrasive at all the sticker is 
Let me zoom in. Woo! The sticker is still on there. Bit more over here. Um, and yeah, it's cleaned up really well. Really well. The chrome is shiny on there. The rust has pretty much all come off the bolts. I mean, you can see where um, it's gone through the coating and it's just gone to black, but apart from that, it's really good. Yeah, really happy. Oh, you can actually see the, uh, the code now, made in Japan. All right. Yeah, so this is all Suntour gear. Suntour? Yeah, Suntour. But I'm just going to go through all this now and uh, clean everything up and then give it a rinse after and let it dry. Um, I do have another batch to put in, so I'll do that. But yeah, really happy with that front derailleur. I mean, considering that was brown before, that is beautiful. So we're back with the Trek after the evaporust treatment on all the parts and I have to say I am super impressed with it. Um, the derailleur here, you, that cage was all rusted before and um, it's cleaned it off nicely. So that is nice and chromy again. The pitting is there on the front um, and on the back where the rust has eaten through but looking at it it is night and day the difference um, and all I had to do all I had to do was leave it in there about six hours get in there with a light brush brush it off and rinse it off you do have to make sure you dry the parts thoroughly after um, so it might be advisable like dunking them in some as an methylated spirits um, ethanol <laughs> something like that that just quickly disperses the water or even just some WD-40 something like that um, because if you leave any water on there and it sits for a while it will bring out a rust stain again um, so just make sure the parts are dry but yeah I am really happy with how that has turned out there looks really good so just gonna get on with assembling the rest of the bike now um, putting all the rest of the parts on the chain is cleaned up nice as well the chain is all free uh, free wheel cleaned up nice everything so we'll put it all back together now and you'll be able to see exactly what it's what it looks like and um, I think you'll agree it's pretty pretty damn good so these pedals they were brown pretty much um, if I flip them over you can still see there are spots of rust just on the bolts but all the uh, rust around the pedals is cleaned off so they will need touching up just with a bit of black paint um, and the clip as well the clip hasn't cleaned up as best I guess it's a lower grade metal um, the chrome has gone on it so you could always just buy a two pound strap to replace that oh it was in shot now but yeah the straps are cleaned up okay the pedals cleaned the okay. Now the freewheel and chain both were rusted. Um, it was only surface rust. The chain didn't have any stiff links or anything. Um, so I'm not sure how evapo rust would work on the stiff links. But It has cleaned the free wheel up really well. So there's, it cleaned all of the surface rust off it. Um, I dried it off after and put a bit of lube through the free wheel while spinning it around. And it still spins nicely. So that will work well. And it doesn't actually look that worn. There's no vicious sharp toothing on it. So, um, happy with that yeah it looks a lot more respectable than it did before
And that is the original um, Suntor, is it Suntor? Sake, Freewheel, Suntor, it's one of them. So while we're here, chain is all greased up now. Slowly rotate it round, there is no stiff links, I've made sure of that. All seems to be spinning freely. And yeah, that should last a, last a while longer. Um, I know you can obviously buy chains, 7 speed chains for under a tenner. You can probably buy the block as well for about the same price, but this was just a test of how the evaporus will cope and it is cleaned up nice. How long it lasts after, who knows. Uh, that will be a test to see, but as long as you keep it greased up and uh, clean, it should should continue to work. And while we're here as well, the chrome on the quick release skewers has come up nice. Uh, that had a bit of rust on, so that side's quite good because it's still intact. But on the other side, on the other side, unfortunately, the chrome has really deteriorated. Like it's literally just flaking off this now. Um, so that will come back. The rust will come back on that in no time. So new quick release skewers are ideally needed on this if you want to keep it looking nice otherwise the rust will just come back on this because all the chrome plating is peeling off that must be a really thin layer of chrome I also stuck all the cantilever parts in there and they've cleaned up so well um, you can see on the back there where there was a little bit of moisture that sat and the rust has come back but all this was rusted that's cleaned up nice uh, there's a bit inside there that's had a little moisture so the rust has come back but everything else has cleaned up really well and I'm happy to uh, put them back on the bike if I can find the hole Great. the stem went in there as well to be cleaned it had a nice seized Um, seized doohickey expander bolt in there but it's all come up nice and clean now just put that down um, you can see before it was quite a dull colour it still is quite a dull colour but it's less brown than it was before there's patches here where the paint's come off which I'll retouch and around the base is that evening shot? no it's not <laughs> there we go so there are parts around here that need to be touched, just a few on top. The bolts come up really nice and clean. And there is a spot there and there which I'll just retouch. But apart from that, really pleased with it. Don't give me that look. She's in a mood now because I dragged her out the garage. Tov! Ignore me. So when it came to the shift levers, they were seized. Um, they also had a bit of corrosion on the barrel adjusters and the, um, the, the mounting bolts. I soaked them in the uh, rust, no frost stuff, sorry, and it seems to have fixed them. I've also, oh, that, why is that so so tight? I've also um, lubed them all up and everything. This side is apparently really fucking tight. It's going on the wrong way. Idiot. No, it's still really tight, but I've also gone through, um, let's zoom in, ah, let's keep it there, so you can see no rust now on the barrel adjuster and hopefully you'll be able to see no rust on the mounting bolt, um, they also click through all the gears now freely 
a bit of a weird shifter. They've got a, um, a very specific cable as well, which I'm going to try and use a different type. Uh, but we'll see how we get on. But yeah, both shifters are free now, and that was just literally from the Evaporust slash Frost stuff. And that works. Brake levers are the same treatment. Um, you can see they have cleaned up nicely on the barrel adjusters and the mounting bolts, front and rear. So I'm happy with them. Now the seat post bolt here for this clamp was seized um, and unfortunately the evaporust treatment didn't actually solve that. Um, I tried soaking it for quite a while but it didn't solve it. Um, I tried heat and all of the rest of the jazz, nothing did it so I actually had to um, cut off the saddle so I could get to the, what do you call it, the, the, the nut sort of thing on top. Um, and then from there I just ground that away, knocked out the bolt and replaced both the bolt and the top and replaced the saddle. And that's looking a bit better than it did before. So while I'm at it, these uh, Suntour Express shifters are a little different than normal. Um, they've got a weird shifting mechanism to start with, like these ones cross over when you shift. But also, you have to take apart the cover to get them out, and they use this cable. This cable here is a barrel, but it's not a brake barrel. So, it's a one of a kind, just used for these shifters, and you can't really find them anymore. Obviously, this is a um, this is the cable for it. This is a brake, so you can see the difference between them. Um, they're roughly the same thickness, but the diameters are way off, way off. So you can't just use a brake cable. So instead, the cable you need is one of these. It's a dual-ended cable, and it has this end on, which is a small hill-like cable. Trying to get that in focus. Small pill like end, um, and it is used for old Hure shifters, H U R E T. Um, so I've used those on those old shifters before, and they seem to be the only ones that really fit these Suntour Express shifters. Which the hint came from RJ. I was going to use this anyway, but RJ confirmed that in a video he made, so I will get this fitted and uh, get the brake cables fitted and it will all be done. And the last real bit of cleaning went to these. Um, they've cleaned up okay. It was just the chrome on the little dome nut, not dome nuts, spike nuts um, for these bridge, bridge supports. They cleaned up okay. I mean, they didn't obviously take any amount of effort whatsoever, but it works. There is one thing I'm confused about with these brakes though. And maybe someone a bit more knowledgeable than me can answer this. These Suntour XC LTD cantilevers, on one side, generally, as you're looking at them, the left side, they have a nut washer that goes between the fork and the uh, brake, brake itself. The spring for the tensioning goes into that nut. It doesn't actually go into the hole in the frame. So I can't get any bloody tension on one side. The other side's fine, but this one side has this nut on, the other side doesn't. So if anyone knows how to actually adjust this so it has some tension in it, that would be great, because I have no idea at the moment. So, I think that will do for this now. Um, the bike is all back together. 
it's all working. I've still got to do a, just a little bit of adjustment on those brakes once I work out how to properly tension that one side, but this experiment, I think, is a success. Um, I've obviously done the oxalic acid before. I don't think I've actually done a video on white vinegar, but it is obviously quite a corrosive substance um, and it will start to eat away at metal if you leave it in there a long time. Um, so I thought I'd try this frost slash evaporous solution out. Five litres of it cost me £30, which is on the expensive side compared to the other two. But you do get to reuse it. Um, I mean, you can get to reuse the white vinegar and oxalic the same, but you can reuse it until it basically runs out. Um, apparently, which I'll try in another video with probably the Rally Superb, apparently if you soak towels, like paper towels, in the solution, wrap them over the frame, um, and wrap cling film around it, it will work on frames as well, which I'll be interested to try out on the other bikes. But for this little experiment, it's been a success. It works pretty pretty quick actually. Um, for the rust that I had on this, after two to six hours, the rust was gone and it was able to just brush off with a light brush. Um, you have to obviously dry everything out properly after otherwise any moisture on it will just turn back to rust and you'll be left with a nasty rust splodge on your clean chrome or clean metal. Um, and obviously if you're going to use it long term and you're going to use it in the wet you will need to protect it so I'm going to go around this bike and just touch up any of the black parts on the metal. Um, with some black paint just so it doesn't rust again. Uh, the chain and the free wheel, I'm going to keep an eye on that and see how long it lasts. Uh, with a with good maintenance it should carry on working. Um, and yeah, that's about it. The quick release skewers, ideally, they do need to be replaced because once the chrome is flaked off like that, it's not going to be any good unless you paint them. So that is something to think about. But yeah, overall, a nice little success. So yeah, hope you like this little experiment with the frost slash evapor rust solution. It is a good product. I do like it. Um, I actually love the fact that I could just put my hands in it and it was fine. That was like the biggest upside to it. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna use it a bit more on a few other bikes. So uh, if you wanna see more of this content, hit the subscribe. If you like or dislike the video, choose your thumbs up or thumbs down, whichever it is now of choice. I'll uh, catch you in the next video.